Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn about transmitting electricity and how we can transmit electricity and minimize the power losses while doing so. Now when electricity passes through a resistor, the resistor will radiate energy. We've studied this a bit before. Over here you can see a photograph of a resistor shortly before it explodes due to the current flowing through it. So the energy radiated away by a resistor is given by power loss equals I squared R, where I is the electric current and R is the resistance. Now remember that in reality, even electric wires count as resistors. Often in physics, we'll assume that the wires don't have resistance. In real life, of course, that's not the case. So how do we minimize the amount of energy that the wires lose as it carries electricity from place to place? Well, we know from our equation that P loss equals I squared R, which means that we must minimize the current in the wire. And by making the current smaller, we can make the power loss much smaller. So for AC electricity, we can do this with transformers. We can't do this for DC electricity. So transformers are able to decrease the current by increasing the voltage. We've learned about how transformers do this. Transformers will decrease the current in the same ratio that they increase the voltage. Remember that the power loss is proportional to the square of the current. Uh, which means that if we change the current by a factor of 10 using a transformer, then we decrease the power loss by a factor not of 10, but of 100. So minimizing the current really, really helps us. High voltage AC lines, uh, high voltage power lines rather, transmit AC signals because they've been transformed and they've been left as AC. And they transmit them at very, very low currents and therefore very, very high voltages. A step-up transformer will transform the electricity from the generator into a very high voltage signal that is sent through these power lines. A step-down transformer set up at the other end of the wire will step down the very high voltage stuff in the power line to a lower voltage that can actually be used for something. Now the electricity in a generator is usually generated in the neighborhood of between 10 kilovolts and 20 kilovolts. A transformer will step this up to 330 kilovolts, that is 330,000 volts uh, before it's transmitted long distance. This huge increase in voltage greatly decreases the current and therefore the energy lost as it's transmitted. So this is the highest voltage that the electricity reaches uh, and the wires must be widely spaced at this point to prevent arcing. Remember that, that if we have two wires close together and there's a very, very high voltage between them, then the electric field can cause a huge spark to be generated between the two wires, which can damage the wires. Now when the electricity reaches a city, we don't want to be carrying it around 330 kilovolts anymore. So uh, at a city substation, a step-down transformer transforms electricity to a more manageable 300, uh, th uh, 33,000 volts, rather. So from there, it's transmitted to various different areas in the city at high voltage power lines that are not quite as high as the power lines crossing the country. And uh, once it gets to the suburb where it's used, it's, trans uh, it's uh, stepped down to about 11 kilovolts or 11,000 volts at a local substation. You might have seen these around. They have big warning high voltage on the front. Finally, the electricity reaches a distribution transformer, which is often mounted on a pole like we can see in the photograph. So this will step the voltage down from the 11 kilovolts 
down to a much more manageable 240 volts, which is then sent into the house. Some household appliances will contain their own transformers that will turn this 240 volt alternating current into a current uh, of the appropriate voltage for the appliance. And this, of course, is why we don't change it into DC uh, before sending it into the house. So transformers make it possible to transmit electricity over very, very long distances. They are, in fact, the main reason that we use AC electricity instead of DC electricity. DC can't be transformed. Electricity is accessible, uh, uh, and it's accessible even in very remote locations. And it also means that power plants can be built long distances away from where we actually need the electricity, just because we can transmit it long distances without losing any of its energy. So the development of the transformer has made a big difference to the way that people live. It's one of the uh, devices which has made electricity spread to everywhere. So electricity is not a luxury. It is not you know, something for the rich people to afford to power a single electric light in their home. Uh, it is in fact pretty much ubiquitous, affordable, and everywhere. It has in fact become a necessity that, is, that it is Im almost impossible not to live in. Over here we have a photograph of one of the first buildings that was constructed with the electric light. And a very fancy light it is. So this is the end of the, uh, the, end of the theory, rather. We've learned a bit about transformers and how they've changed society. Uh, so let's go on to some questions to test your knowledge. Question 11. What is the purpose of transforming electricity to a high voltage before it is transmitted over long distances? Does it increase the speed of the electricity? Increase the, uh, decrease the energy lost by the electricity? Decrease the risk of arcing between the electric wires? Or does it increase the amount of energy that the electricity can carry? Now remember, when we transform electricity, we don't change the amount of energy in that electricity. So it can't be D. Uh, the speed of electricity is uh, fairly constant. Voltage may have a small effect on exactly the speed, but not a very large one. Uh, the transformation will not decrease the risk of arcing. It will, in fact, increase the risk of arcing. The higher the potential difference, that is, the larger the voltage, uh, the higher the risk of arcing. The only option left is B. The transformation decreases the energy lost by the electricity, and this is the correct answer. The reason for this is because when we uh, transform electricity to a very, very high voltage, it means we transform it to a very, very low current. If there's a very, very low current, it means we lose very little energy. And so this is why we transform it to that high voltage in the first place. Question 12. Calculate how much power is radiated by a 1 ohm wire carrying a 60 watt signal at 240 volts. So to figure this out, we're going to need to work out the current through the wire, right? So if we have a 60 watt signal at 240 volts, then the current that the wire is drawing can be found with this equation, I equals P on V. Substitute 60 watts and 240 volts, and we end up with an answer of 0.25 amps. Now this doesn't quite answer the question. The question has asked how much power is radiated. So we don't know the voltage drop across the 1 ohm wire. It's certainly less than 240 volts. But we do know that 0.25 amps flow through it, right? And we do know its resistance. And that means that we can use this equation in order to figure out how much power it radiates away. So substituting I and R, we end up with an answer of 0.0625 watts, or 62.5 milliwatts, very small amount. 
How about a 400 watt signal at 10 kilovolts? Now, because the uh, signal is so many more watts, we might expect it to be more power lost. Let's find out. We can use the same method in order to figure out the current and the power loss. So the current is the total power over the voltage of the total signal. So that's 400 over 10,000, that is 10 kilovolts. And this produces 0.04 amps, an even lower current than in part A. So the power loss, as we'll see, will be even lower. I squared R gives us 0.04 squared times 1, which gives us an answer of 0.016 watts, or just 16 milliwatts. So you can see that even if we're transmitting uh, signals with a lot of energy, as long as we transmit them at a high enough voltage, we can lose only a very, very small amount of energy. Question 13. An electrical signal is sent through a 2 to 1 step up transformer. How does the amount of power lost by the incoming wire compare to that lost by the outgoing wire? We can assume that both wires have the same resistance. So if we have a 2 to 1 step up transformer, that means that the voltage in the secondary coil is twice as great as the voltage in the primary coil. But that means that the current is only half as much as in the primary coil, right? So the voltage is doubled and its current is halved. What will halving the current do to the power loss? Well, power loss equals I squared R, right? And I has been halved. So when the current is halved, the power loss is reduced by a factor of four. So the loss power is much lower in the secondary wire than in the primary. The outgoing wire radiates four times less heat than the incoming wire. Question 14. Outline the voltage transformations that occur during the transmission of electricity from a power plant to the home. There's more than one transformation. Right, let's start with the generation of the electricity. The electricity is generated at a voltage of tens of thousands of volts. So between 10 kilovolts and 20 kilovolts. It's stepped up to a voltage of hundreds of thousands of volts, up to about 330 kilovolts in Australia for transmission over very, very long distances. Eventually it reaches a city, and this is when it's stepped down. This is the, uh, the 330 kilovolt is the highest voltage that the electricity reaches. So once it reaches the city substation, it steps down by a factor of about 10, to a voltage of perhaps 33 kilovolts. Once it's stepped down to this lower voltage, it's transmitted to the various different suburbs of the city where it's transformed again. It steps down by a smaller factor, maybe a factor of three, when it reaches the local substation. Once it's reached the local substation, it has a voltage of about 11 kilovolts. Finally, it's stepped down at a pole transformer or a distribution transformer to 240 volts, and this is when it's sent into the house. Question 15. Outline some of the benefits that transformers have had on the transmission of electricity. Well, I'm sure there should be one that's fairly obvious. We lose less power when we transmit stuff using transformers. Transformers allow AC electricity to be sent long distances because the transformers can decrease the current and decrease the power loss in transmission to very, very low levels even if the resistance of the wire is significant. So AC electricity, such as that generated in power stations, is far more useful than, for example, DC electricity. 
It can be transmitted to cities or towns or very, very long distances without having to worry about losing all the energy along the way. And this, uh, of course, means that domestic electricity, electricity used in the house, is both available and affordable. So that's the end of the questions. In this section, we've looked at transformers and how they're used in our society to transmit electricity over long distances. We've also looked at exactly how it's stepped up and stepped down as it goes from the generator to our homes.